Good morning, mathematicians. Thank you for joining us today with At Home with APS. Um, we're going to start our morning off with our calendar as usual. So what month are we in again? Do you remember? That's right, the month of June. Today is Thursday. We come down here and now we need to figure out what is the number of the day? What's our date? So let's count from last Monday, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's right, 25. Let me find my blue marker. How do I write 25? A two and a five. Great. What is our pattern that we have going with our shapes on here? So what shape should I put around the 25 this morning? Well, we had a green triangle, red circle, red circle, green triangle, red circle, red circle. Did you say green triangle? That's what I thought too. All right, so today is the 25th and it is a Thursday. We're getting closer to that weekend. Okay, so if today is Thursday, that means that tomorrow will be what day? Friday. Friday comes right after Thursday. And yesterday, the day before Thursday, was Wednesday. Exactly. Sunday and Saturday are considered weekend days. Maybe we'll put a little star next to those so when we're talking about weekend, we can remember which days of the week that is. All right, let's see. We need to represent our 25 on our frames. So we have a full 10 and then another 10. So that's 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. How else can we tell that that is five by looking at that? It's a whole row on the 10 frame, right? And when we have one full row on the 10 frame, that's five because it's half of 10. So 10, 20, 25, great. All right, we're gonna do our today's number. I'm gonna come up here and make sure that I have a pen to work with. 25, we already talked about how to write it. And now we need to represent it in some different ways. How should we represent first? Let's see, we've done things like dot patterns, we've done tally marks, we've done number sentences. I kind of think that dot patterns would be a good way to represent today because of this five. And so I feel like oops, that we will end up with some good groups of five for this one. So let's check that and see. So I'm gonna use the dice pattern for five. You remember what that looks like? It's a, uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna make the pen a little fatter so that gets easier to do. It looks like this four pattern with one in the middle, right? Let's see what I have so far. Five, 10, 15, 20. Ooh, I got rid of my 25 in the middle, didn't I, when I did that erasing? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Just even groups of five this time, right? So we have one, oops, I think I'm gonna, Use a thinner, now I'm gonna to go to the thinner pen. 
One group of five here. Two, three groups. Four groups, five groups of five in 25. Let's write a number sentence for that. Five plus five plus five plus five plus five would equal 25, right? One, two, three, four, five fives would equal 25. We could write a number sentence to go with our 10 frame representation. 10 plus 10 plus five. How else could we write a number sentence for 25. We can start with yesterday's number, 24. What would we have to add to 24 to make 25? That's right, just one. Uh-oh. Miss Carnes, could you come and log your computer in? We can get back to our today's number. All right, so we're gonna put 25 here in the middle of our hundreds chart. We already talked about what was before 25, right? 24 is before 25. So what comes after 25? 26, that'll be what tomorrow's date is. What about 10 more than 25? What comes after the 20s? The 30s, so 35. And the teens are before 25, so that would be 15. 10 less would be 15, right? We need one more representation for 25 today. Hmm, what should we do? Should we do tally marks? Because those are nice groups of five also. Sure, let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Count with me by fives. Five, ten, fifteen. 20, 25. Nice counting. All right, we forgot yesterday to do the hundreds, I mean the counting jar. So let's see what's in the jar today. And we'll count it out. Uh, there are pieces of straw. All right, let's count, count with me. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, woo, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There are fourteen pieces of straw in the counting jar. How do I write fourteen? A one and a four. That's right. So if you're a kindergartner, after you're, we're done today, or if you want to pause me now and do it, you can. I want you to find 14 things and count out 14 things. If you're a first grader, we're going to double that. What would double 14 be? It would be two tens, so 20 something, and two fours, so 28. So if you're a first grader, find 28 things and count out 28 things. And if you're a second grader, we're gonna double that. What's double two? Two twenties is gonna be 40. Oh, but we have two eights. So that's gonna be 16. So that gives me an extra 10, doesn't it? So it's gonna be 56. 
you'll have to find 56 things to count out if you're a second grader. Or if you're a kindergarten and first grader and you want a challenge, you could do that very same thing. All right. Let's count from 25 on our hundreds chart. We're going to count by tens today. So let's find 25. It's going to be in this row that has the five as the, the second digit. And it's going to be in the row that has 20s. So this row has 20. So 25. So let's count by tens starting at 25. Count with me. 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105. Let's count backwards too. 105, 95, 85, 75, 65, 55, 45, 25, whoops, I forgot 30, 35, 25, 15, five. We went all the way back up, didn't we? It's a good idea to practice counting forward and backward by tens because backward could help you with subtracting tens when you need it. All right, what else are we going to work on today? Let's look at what our riddle for today is. Yesterday we did chicken shells. This one's about Easter. Easter art. A canvas made of fragile shells, a palette filled with soft pastels. Each becomes a painted prize, a treasure in a child's eyes. Can you count each work of art? Here's a hint before you start. When it's painting that you view, try to think of groups of two. Do you see any groups of two there? Huh. Well, these are obviously kind of in groups of two, right? And maybe we could use this as a group of two, and then that one as a last group of two. Let's try it. Let's count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I'll double check it. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I think there are twelve of those pretty eggs. All right. The last thing I think we have time to do is add a few vocabulary words to our vocabulary chart. And then today we're going to be playing some games, or a game, I should say, with vocabulary words. So that's exciting. A word we've been using a lot that I want to put on our chart is double, right? To double is to make something twice as big. We keep doubling our counting jar for our practice. We've done doubles on our fingers, like three and three, right? This is one three, and that's another three. I made it twice as large. There's two of them. That's the example I drew on here, three plus three, and then dot patterns for three plus three. So a double is something we've been working with. From our books yesterday, we talked about addition, right? Addition makes the amount bigger. Um, another word, this is the symbol, and another word we use sometimes related to addition is plus. And then the last one I'm going to add before Ms. Karnas comes out here to play some games and do an activity with you is subtraction. That was our second book yesterday. And subtraction makes the amount smaller, right? And we use this minus sign with subtraction. All righty. That's our calendar and vocabulary for today. And now we'll see what Ms. Karnas has for us. Let me get these out of the way. <gasps> Hello. Good morning, boys and girls. Well, that was a real bell ringer, wasn't it? <laughs> Literally. Hey, we're so glad to have you here with us again today. And we're going to do a little task, and then we're going to we're going to um, turn it into a game. And so Mrs. Obenshane is going to come back up and play that with us, just to make it more fun. It's more fun to play with a friend if you can, isn't it? Okay, so 
we've got our good old 1 to 120 chart. And we have another one right here on paper, right? Boys and girls, if you want to get out your hundreds chart at home, you can do that and it might help you or you can follow along with ours. So to start, as just a little warm up, we're going to do some counting by tens. So let's just do that all together to start, okay? And you can look at our hundreds chart to help you. So let's count, starting at 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. What if we kept going? What's the next 10 after 100? It's 110. And what's 10 more than that? 120. Very good. Sometimes it gets tricky when we're counting past 100. Sometimes it's tricky to know what comes next, even if we're counting by ones sometimes. Okay, so next we're going to count by tens again, but we're going to try that alternate counting that we did the other day. Do you remember what that means? That means I'm going to count three numbers and then it's your turn to count three numbers until we get all the way to the bottom of our chart. So let's practice just by ones to remember how it goes. So I'm going to count three numbers and then I'm going to clap to help you keep track of your three numbers. But you say them at home, right? So we'll do it by ones to start. So I would say one, two, three. Did you think or say four, five, six? That's how that, this goes. Seven, eight, nine. Where did you stop? At 12? Good. 13, 14, 15. What did you count that time? Did you count 16, 17, 18? If you did, then you've got the idea. So we're going to count by tens using this alternate count. And this is something fun that you can do at home with a parent or a helper you have at home or a brother or a sister, it's kind of fun to practice and go back and forth. So here we go. I'm going to start at 10, same sequence. 10, 20, 30, 70, 80, 90. Did you get those last ones? What did you say for the last ones? What comes after 90 by 10? It would be 100. 110, 120. Nice job. Okay, we're going to practice a couple more um, counting by tens, but not starting at 10. You already practiced with Mrs. Obenshane from fives, right? Counting by tens from five. Why don't we practice counting by tens from three? That means if we're looking at our hundreds chart, we're going to start here with the number three and we're going to count in jumps of 10 and you can follow right down that column to help you. Okay, let's practice it together. Then we'll do the alternate count and we'll get ready for our game here in just a minute. Okay, so let's practice together. Three, 13, 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, here's a tricky spot. If I jump 10 more from 93, I land on 103. We're still following that pattern of the last digit being a three and that can help us remember. Now, 10 more than 103, think about that. What's 10 more than just three? 10 more than three is 13. So 10 more than 103 is 113. Are you ready to try it as an alternate count? Okay, I'm gonna count three, and then when I clap, you count the next three. Here we go. Three, 13, 23, 63, 73, 83. Where did you stop? Were you able to get those last tricky three? What were they? They were 93, 103, 113 were your last three numbers. 
We're gonna do one more, but this time instead of clapping, I'm gonna track your counts on my fingers. I'm gonna track my counts on my fingers too. And this is something that it's a good idea to try at home because fingers can help us in lots of ways with math. And one of the ways they can help is help us to keep track of how many we're counting. Okay, let's practice from seven. Are you ready? Here we go. We're gonna practice all together and then we'll do our alternate count. So looking at your hundreds chart, you're gonna start at the top at seven and work on those, making those jumps of 10 till we get all the way to the bottom. Remember, we're gonna go past 100. So be thinking about those trickier numbers. Here we go, ready? Seven, 17, 27, 37, 47, 57, 67, 77, 87, 97, 107, 117. Were you able to think about the patterns and remember how to count those? Nice job. Okay, so we're gonna do our alternate count, but instead of clapping, this time we're gonna track with fingers. Are you ready? Seven, 17, 27. 57, 67, 77. Hmm, did we skip one? Because I think we stopped here. <gasps> did you make it to 117? <gasps> Maybe Miss Karnas lost track. All right, our last three numbers we should have counted were 97, 107, 117. And now we're gonna bring Mrs. Obenshane up to play a game. We're going to use our hundreds chart and we're also, going to use bundles and sticks, which we've used before. Do you remember bundles and sticks, kiddos? So we have single sticks, and then we're going to make bundles. Are these for me? What do you remember about a bundle? How many are in here? It's 10, very good. There are 10 sticks in a bundle. And in this game, we're gonna use a dice, a die with zero through nine on it, or a spinner, and today we're gonna to try a fancy electronic spinner. That's what Mrs. Obenshane's going to use. So, this is a race to, we're gonna to try to race to 50, okay? But we'll see how far we get. So here's how the game works. I'll show you by starting to play. So I'm gonna roll my zero through nine die, and I get an eight. That means that I get eight single sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And every time I reach a 10, I'm going to make a bundle, right? Just like our bundles, a bundle of 10. And we're gonna race on the hundreds chart to see who can get to 50 or closest during our game. So I have eight. How many more do I need before I can make a bundle? Eight, nine, 10. I need two more. So we're gonna be thinking about that as we play as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that I'm on eight. How about um, I'll be an O and you be an X. Okay. Just to open chain, just to help us so we don't lose track of where we are. Alrighty. I'm gonna use the spinner over here. So you can find electronic spinners online. We've showed you how to make your own um, that you could use at home, but you can also find electronic ones that you could use too. So let's try this one, if I can get it going. See what it lands on. It landed on eight also. So I am gonna be in the same place. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. But not enough to make a bundle yet, not right? Yet. Okay. So I think I'll. Can I erase you so that. Sure, because I'm going to move on, right? You're going to move on. And we'll still have the eight marked if and it helps. And we know that you're on know. eight. Okay. So here we go. Oh my goodness. I get a nine. So one, two, 
I'm going to add that to my 8, right? And that will give me a 10. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So now I'm going to take 2, add those to my 8, and I've made my first bundle of 10. And then how many do I have left here? I used two out of my nine already. So I have seven. So a 10 and seven, what number am I on? I'm on 17. Can you see how many more I need for a bundle? It's easy to see on the hundreds chart, right? 18, 19, 20, three more to my next bundle. Ugh. I just spun a one, so that's not even enough for me to make a bundle yet, is it? I have nine. Moving one spot. All right. I rolled a six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can I make a bundle? I can, remember? So if I'm on 17, I needed three more to make another bundle of 10. So I still have three left over. So now I have 10, 20, 21, 22, 23. Did you get Mrs. Overton? I got a two, which isn't very much, but it's enough for me to at least make one bundle, I think. So I was at nine. One more would make ten. And then I have one more. So I am on eleven. Boys and girls, I don't think we're going to have time to make it to 50 today, but we will be able to see who got the furthest. This is a game that you can play at home. We have the directions on our resources, parents and helpers at home, and it's a fun one. All right, I rolled a four. So if I have 23, one, two, three, four. So 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Not quite enough for a bundle. And I rolled a three. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Not enough for another bundle. Maybe we have time for one more round to see if I can at least get two bundles. Oh, I hope so. Alrighty, there we go. So I had 27. Oh, and I rolled a six. Do I get to make a bundle? You betcha I do, because I only need three more, right, for my next bundle. So, and we know six is one, two, three, and another three, four, five, six. So I put my seven and three together. I've got a bundle, and I have three more. So I have 10, 20, 30, Three. I think that's what I need to get a bundle is another six. Look, I rolled a six. I at least get to make two bundles. I think Miss Carnes will still win. But one, two, three, four, five, six. And to go with my four, that should be another ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I had enough to make two bundles. 10, 20. So who's got more, Ms. Carnes? Oh boy, well, just by looking at our bundles, I can see that you have two bundles of 10 and I have three bundles of 10. So I know I have more, plus I have three more singles. So 33 is greater than 20. And we can see it also on our hundreds chart. Try this game at home, guys. And if you don't have things you can bundle, you can just make 
piles or groups of 10 out of anything you have at home that um, you're allowed to use for something like this. Even pebbles from outside work. Okay, my favorite part, story. All right, time for us to read a story. This story that we're going to read today is one of my favorite stories. It's really a cute one. It's called The Greedy Triangle by Marilyn Burns, and it's illustrated by Gordon Silvera and published by Scholastic Books. So let's see what this story is about. The Greedy Triangle. What does that make you think it might be about? Maybe about a triangle or shapes? Let's see. Once there was a triangle that was, at most, as most triangles are, always busy. The triangle spent its time holding up rocks, supporting bridges, making music in a symphony orchestra, catching the wind for sailboats, being slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. Do you see them in there? Here's a triangle as a slice of pie, the sail, the top of a house. This is a musical instrument, parts of a sandwich, if you cut a sandwich diagonally. Do you ever look for triangles like that? Everywhere. The triangle's favorite thing, however, was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. So when you do this, your arm makes a triangle. That's what he's talking about there, right? The triangle's friends liked hearing the news. One day, the triangle began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old thing, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the triangle went to see the local shapeshifter. How may I help you, the shapeshifter asked the triangle. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the triangle, it would be more interesting. And that's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the triangle into a quadrilateral. So a quadrilateral has four sides. So I brought my own shapeshifter today. We'll see if we can get this to work. So we started as a triangle, right? And triangles have how many sides? Three sides. Do you see the triangle there? Okay. Could be like that. Could be like that. Still a triangle. Still three sides. And he asked the shapeshifter for one more side. So let's spin this around. I've added one side, and now you can see that I have four sides. I am a quadrilateral, which is also a square. Any four-sided shape is a quadrilateral. So a rectangle would be a quadrilateral. Lots of other four-sided shapes. Let's see what, the, what happens to the, to the quadrilateral. Life changed in a wonderful way. The quadrilateral was happy with all the new things it could do. The quadrilateral couldn't be a baseball, could be, sorry, a baseball diamond, or, or first or second or third base. It could take the position on a checkerboard or a chessboard. It could be a television screen, a computer screen, a movie screen. It could frame windows or pictures and much, much more. Do you see it there in the pictures? Here he is on the board or the baseball field or a TV because it's just four sides, right? doesn't have to be a square. It could be a rectangle or any other four-sided shape. The quadrilateral's favorite thing, however, was to be the pages of a book. I learned so many interesting stories that way, it said, which I can tell my friends. The quadrilateral's friends liked hearing the stories. There's all his friends. Look, a diamond is also a quadrilateral, just like this one. But one day, the quadrilateral began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same thing, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the quadrilateral went back to the shapeshifter. How may I help you now? The shapeshifter asked the quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the quadrilateral, my life would be more interesting. 
That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the quadrilateral lateral into a... Do you know what this shape's called with five sides? Into a pentagon. So let's take our shapeshifter and we're going to add one more side. And we have a pentagon also. So now I've added one side, right? I had four sides. And then I was able to add one side, and now there's five sides. One, two, three, four, five. And that makes me a pentagon. Okay. Let's see what happens to the pentagon. Life changed in a wonderful way. The pentagon was happy with the new things it could do. On a baseball diamond, the pentagon could be home plate. It could be a section on a soccer ball or appear whenever someone drew a five-pointed star. The Pentagon's favorite thing, however, was to be the headquarters of the United States military near Washington, D.C. I hear all the top secrets that way, it said. It's too bad I can't tell them to my friends. The Pentagon's friends couldn't help but feeling left out. They had always liked hearing his stories before, right? And look, they have very sad faces now. After a while, time seemed to pass slowly for the Pentagon, and it became dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the Pentagon went to the shapeshifter. So you're here again? The shapeshifter said to the Pentagon. Now what would you like? I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the Pentagon, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof, the shapeshifter turned the Pentagon into a, do you know the word? Has six sides, it's a hexagon. So let's change our shape. So we have to add one more side. Whew. Let's see if we can kind of get this to stand up for us. Now we've got six sides on our shape and more angles too. All right. Let's see what happens to the pentagon, to the hexagon, sorry, from the pentagon to the hexagon. Life changed again in a wonderful way. The hexagon was happy with all the new things it could do. The hexagon fit in the, in as floor tiles in houses and patios, and fancy crackers at parties and picnics. It worked as the socket of certain bolts and the prong of certain wrenches. The hexagon's favorite thing, however, was to be a cell in a beehive. I love watching the bees as they buzz in and out, it said. The hexagon spent so much time in the beehive, it was too busy to talk to its friends. The friends missed the hexagon and couldn't help but feeling ignored. Seems like this isn't working out very well for him, more and more sides, and his friends aren't being included anymore. Again and again, the shapeshifter became restless, dissatisfied, and unhappy with its life. And again and again, it returned to the shapeshifter for more sides and more angles. The shapeshifter agreed to turn it into one shape after another, a hexagon, an octagon, a nonagon, a decagon, and on and on. Finally, the shape had so many sides and so many, many angles, its sides were so small that it had trouble keeping its balance. Its friends couldn't tell which side it was on and began to avoid the shape. You can see that there are still some flat sides on there, but he almost, almost is turning into a circle, it looks like to me but a circle would have all curves and no straight sides, so not really. However, he can't keep his balance. He's kind of rolling like a circle would. One day, when the shape was going down a hill, it began to roll. Faster and faster it went, screeching around corners, crashing into fences and trees, colliding with bicycles and terrifying walkers. At last, the shapeshifter came to a stop. It felt tired and dizzy and lonely and sad. 
Enough, thought the shapeshifter. The shape, I mean. I don't know which side is up. I can't keep my balance. My friends don't want me around. The shape could no longer remember why it had been so unhappy. As a triangle, very, as why it had been so unhappy as a triangle. Very carefully, it made its way back to the shapeshifter. There's the shapeshifter. I was already thinking he needed to go back to the shapeshifter. Aren't you happy yet, the shapeshifter said. I want to be a triangle again, said the shape. I'm not surprised, said the shapeshifter. Poof, the shapeshifter turned the shape back into a triangle. The triangle was delighted to have its old shape back again and kept itself very busy. Once again, it held up roofs, supported bridges, and made music in a symphony orchestra. It caught the wind for sailboats and became slices of pie and halves of sandwiches and much, much more. You see all the triangles in the pictures? Still, the triangle's favorite thing was to slip into place when people put the hands, their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. Its friends liked hearing the news and were glad the triangle was back in shape again. All right, and we would just have to get rid of a few sides here to get back to our triangle shape, right? Because I had, I think I was out to six sides and for a triangle, I just need to have three. Isn't that a clever little book? We do have a few vocabulary words that we'll add to our list. I'm not sure if we're gonna play with these, but We'll put them on for right now, and then we're gonna play a vocabulary game. So we're gonna add the word circle. That's a, a continuous line with no sides, right? And the greedy triangle, he started to look like a circle, but he wasn't quite a circle. Hmm, find some taping issues here. And then, a hexagon was the biggest shape we made. It had six sides. If we go down to five sides, we made a pentagon. If we only have four sides, it's a quadrilateral. I really like that word. You can use that word with your parents. It's a pretty fancy word. And it's any four-sided shape. We probably think about squares or rectangles the most, so I wrote those on here. But any four-sided shape, a diamond, would also be a quadrilateral. And then the hero of our story was a triangle with three sides. All right. Let's hear about our vocabulary game that we're going to play. you may have played before and it's called headbands. You could do this at home um, with really nothing fancy just by writing um, some words down or drawing a picture of a word and then having uh, whoever you're playing with guess what that word is. So here's what's gonna happen. Both Mrs. Obenchain and I have vocabulary words that we've been working on for the last two weeks with you all. And words are important in math, just as important as numbers, right? Because they give us ways to name what we're talking about and what we're doing. So um, to start, we'll have uh, Mrs. Obenshane pull a card without looking at it okay. and put it on her headband. Am I pulling and, from these? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give her clues about her words. She's going to try to guess. And we're going to keep doing that until one minute is up. And then we'll switch places and it'll be my turn. And I'll do the same thing. I'll pull cards, put them on my headband without seeing them. And Mrs. Obenchain will help give me clues to help me try to figure out what they are. Okay, I think our timer is ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. See if I can get it in the little spot. Okay. Can you this, see my word? This is a money word. Mm. This word is about money. Mm. This is a very small amount of money. It's a coin. Okay, a very small coin. Will the 
The smallest coin is a dime in size, but the one that is worth the least, is that, why can I, I guess I can't ask questions. It's, I'm, the, it's the one that's worth the least. I'm gonna guess it's a penny. Do I have penny? She has penny. Can I take it off and look? Ah, nice job. Penny. So she chooses another. We still have some time. I, okay. I, yes. Oh, I you see might how it get goes. One more. Oh, shoot. I kind of peeked at that one. I won't look. Let's see. Okay. Wow. So we could get this. This word goes with your word penny for the coin. It's the coin that's worth the least. So it's worth the blank amount. The, what will we say? S smallest? It's worth the smallest amount. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be a coin. So did I get it? Is it smallest? She got All it. Right. It's smallest. Okay. All right. And I time still? time's up. Uh, so now it's my turn. So I'm going to put on my headband. I see it's a little tricky to get those in there, huh? All right. Can you see the right another, way? Another timer over there, too. Oh. Oh, we do. Right. Okay. Let's see. Is it? No, it's not. Is there it right you go. That's up? the right okay. way. Oh, your, your little thing is over to the side a little bit. Oh, oh, that's a little tricky. All right. All yeah, right. There we go. Are we ready? Did you guys see what her word is? Okay, this is a coin, and it's not the, the coin that has the least amount, but it is the next smallest coin. The next smallest coin. So, and we're not talking about size, because that's the dime. Right. So, hmm, pennies are worth one. Dimes are worth 10. And in between, there's a nickel that's worth five. Is it a nickel? It is a nickel. You oh, got it. All right. Okay. That's right. Keep going. Let's do another one. Oh, okay. So we could do the same thing like you did for me with the coins. Okay. If I was using this, to de this word to describe a, a coin that was this amount, it would be a quarter out of the coins that we, we talked about. It is the blank amount. Okay, it's the, is it the biggest amount? Is this it This word is something, another word that means the same thing, yes. Is it the greatest amount? It's not that word either. There's oh another gosh. word that means, it is the opposite of smallest. Oh, is it the largest amount? Yes, it's the largest. Okay. Oh, we're out of time on that one too. Okay. So, it's Mrs. Obenchain's turn now, again. All right, I'm ready. Is this where my thing is? Oh, that's a three-minute timer. I get a oh, lot of time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot more time. <laughs> okay. So this is kind of a this is kind of a big fancy word. Um, we use this word to name number sentences that we write down, especially if we give the answer because it's related to that word we, equal. Okay. So a number sentence, and it makes me think oh. of the word equal. Cool. Another word for number sentence is equation. Is it equation? It is equation. Ah, yay. Nice job. So maybe we'll just like, when that's a third empty, we'll... Okay, we'll try to figure it out. Try Help to... us watch this timer, yes? Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. You guys see Mrs. Obenchain's word? Okay, so this word is part of a number sentence that has adding. So it's one of the numbers that we put together when we're adding to get the sum or the answer. Oh, what are those called? It's like if I had nine plus two, nine and two would be, oh, and it has the word add, it's, adding in it. It's add-ins, I think. Are they add-ins? They are add-ins. Good job. All right. Okay. What do you think? Is it my, is it, is it time for me to go? I think I can go with one more. One more. Maybe. Okay. We'll do one more. Okay. All right. I see it. You guys see it? Okay. So this is a word that we use when we're thinking about taking away, right? Is it subtracting? It's not subtracting, but we use it with subtracting. Okay. And it has a symbol, a symbol that's oh. like this. Sometimes we, we call this word the blank Minus. Symbol. The minus symbol. It. Yes. Nice okay. Job. All right. Your turn. Okay. Here we go. Yep. I'll let you look at it while I get I it situated. It. I okay. See it. Oh, okay. We're back to coins. This is the coin that's worth 10. <gasps> that was a good clue, wasn't it? It's a dime. Uh huh. You got it. The better your clues are, the faster the person can figure it out, right? right? Oh, okay. This is the math word that tells you the total. 
Oh, like the answer? Like the answer. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's a math word. It's a math word that that means if something equals this, this is another word oh. for that. Is it the sum? It is. Nice. I'm I pretty good at my right? clues. Yes, this is Open Chain's a good clue giver. Okay. Oh, okay. This is kind of like largest. It's another math word for that means more or more than a so. larger amount. So maybe one I tried before. I tried bigger before. It's not bigger. It's not bigger, but it's like bigger, isn't it's it? It's like bigger, yeah. Okay. Um, is it, and it's not larger. There's a math symbol that looks like this. Oh. And, it, and it, we always say it sort of looks like a mouth and it's eating the bigger number. Is it greater? Greater, and there's one more word. Greater than. Yep. That really yep. goes with it's that greater symbol. greater than. They go together. All right. I think it's your turn. I think we still All have right. time for some more rounds. Here, I can just do this. This is a good review. Okay. Okay. Let's see what word I have. This word is the opposite of addition. Oh, subtraction. Yep. All right. That was a nice clue. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to show Miss Cardis. I was showing you, but she okay. has to see. Okay, so this word makes me think of adding because when um, we're adding, things are getting bigger. We're putting things together. Together, and there's a little bit on the front of that word, not just oh. together, but um, how many? I would say if I was adding two, I have two plus three. How many? All together. You got That's it. what you say. When you put some groups together and you're talking about how much you have. All together? Yep. All together. All right. Okay. What's your Oh, what's sorry. Your, what's your <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> okay. We got it. Okay. We've been talking about these a lot. Um, this word is about also putting things together in different ways. Um, and we've been talking about putting numbers together in different ways to make other numbers like. Is it adding? Mm, it's not adding. Like we've been talking about, mm. we could use doubles as one of these. We could use five plus as one of these. Mm. Um, is it? Ooh, that's a tr it's a trickier one to do. Um, what are we doing with doubles? We're putting numbers together. We're, we're making... Oh, but doubles is one kind of a combination, and five plus is another kind of a combination. Is it combination? Your word is combination. Oh, great. Okay. I think it's my turn, and this will probably oh, yep, be yep. Our, our last round. One minute. Okay. Here we go. Oh, when you write a number, you use these. <gasps> Numerals? Mm, that is a word that you would use, but you might have a number that has two of, of something or three of something. Another oh. name for numerals. Oh, like uh, um, digits. Yes. All you right. I w the next clue I was going to give is that sometimes you call your fingers digits, yes. too. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. Oh, okay. So... This is another word for adding. It kind of represents the symbol. Oh, like you had minus. It's plus. Is yes. it plus? Yep. yep. Okay. All right. I think I might be able to do one more. Oh, okay. If you're looking at a number, it's going to be the digit that's on the right side or the one that represents individual sticks. Oh, okay. So like if I had a bundle of 10, 10, and then two more would be 12. So the two would be the ones. Yes. You got it. All right. All right. Okay, nice boys work. and girls. That was fun. And that was a great way for us to review our vocabulary. So thank you guys for being with us today. We did a lot. We did our calendar, which we learned so much from. We looked at different ways to make and represent 25. We read all about the greedy triangle and the lessons he learned, and we learned about how to make different shapes and how many sides and angles they have. We practiced counting by tens from tens and from different numbers. We played a racing game with tens and ones, and we got to review our vocabulary. And what a great way to end the week. Don't forget to make your collections for your counting jar. There was 14 or 28 or 56.
that you could count. Nice job. Check out our resources, try out some of these games and activities at home, and thank you for being with us today, guys. See you next time.